This is one of my favorite parts of designing new artwork, choosing what it is I'm actually going to draw. So like I mentioned, this class is all about creating artwork with the intention of having it become a wild commercial success, which means choosing a motif that people want to buy. With trend forecasting, I always start with fashion. Fashion is the forefront of trends and nearly every other visual industry follows suit. Fashion gives me inspiration for motifs, patterns, colors, textures, compositions, pretty much everything visual. So let me show you how I track that. When I'm brainstorming what to draw, I typically look at two fashion brands in particular, Anthropology and ModCloth. I zeroed in on these two for a couple different reasons. One, their audience aligns really well with my audience. We both attract primarily women who are interested in stylish designs and have some disposable income to spend on wall art or home decor. So chances are, whatever anthro or mod cloth is selling is going to appeal to my audience as well. And this is a super easy win for me. I also look at these two brands because they give me a bit of variety. Anthro sells higher-end products with a higher price tag. In addition to fashion, they also sell home decor items and beautiful furniture. Mod cloth is cheaper, quirkier, and more of a fast fashion brand like H&M or Forever 21. Fast fashion simply means that they sell products that are super trendy right now at the moment, but will probably lose relevance much faster. This means they move their inventory quickly and they adapt rapidly. So between the two of these brands, Anthro and ModCloth, I get a really well-rounded idea of what's on trend right now and what's likely to continue being on trend for the foreseeable future. Plus, what is appealing directly to my audience? Okay, so the first thing I look for is patterns. I don't mean the surface design kind, I mean noticing similarities between products across the board. So if you're seeing a lot of teal green throughout the catalog, this means that teal is probably a really popular color trend. So take a mental note there. It might be something to incorporate into your artwork. I'm also seeing a lot of animals, which is great news because this absolutely fits my personal style. I illustrate a lot of cute animals and they're always big earners with art licensing. Honestly, if you're looking for strong sales, animals are going to be a really solid choice for you because they always have high purchasing power. Simply put, people find animals cute and there will always be a demand for them in surface design and art licensing. It is an easy, easy win for us. So both Anthropology and ModCloth have dedicated sections just for animals, which tells you that their audience is also very interested in animal motifs. So for me, I'm gonna stick with what I know will work and is reinforced by what I'm seeing here on their website. So I am going to choose an animal theme for my illustration today. So now let's fine tune it a little bit. Animal print has been wildly popular for the past few years. The trend hasn't really died out yet and it still appears to be going strong based off of what I'm seeing here on these pages. I have a lot of animal print themed artwork in my portfolio and it does really well for me in terms of sales. So I could stick to my tried and true and do another animal print theme, but let's take a peek at mod cloth real quick. They have a little bit more variety within their animals here. So scrolling through Anthropology's animal collection seemed like a lookbook with a highly curated aesthetic of jungle animals and animal print. But taking a look at mod cloth, they have a little bit more variety. I'm seeing animals that are on trend with the upcoming holidays, which I'm really not interested in doing today. Sure, I could always illustrate a bat and I'm sure it would sell really well in October before Halloween and that would be great. But what I want to focus on right now and show you is a more evergreen motif. So evergreen just means something that will be relevant year round, not just for a specific time of year. Okay, what else? Mod cloth, they seem to be loving their raccoons right now. But I'm also seeing some bunnies, kitty cats, sloths, bumblebees, unicorns, butterflies. Basically all animals that are typically on trend and sell pretty well. No big surprises here, you've actually probably been seeing all of these animals printed on various products when you walk through the aisles at Target. In fact, I've actually already illustrated each and every single one of these animals, and they do very well in my licensing portfolio. But I'm also seeing jungle cats here on ModCloth too, which aligns with what I noticed on Anthropology. I already have a lot of jungle cats and animal prints in my portfolio, but they all have really high sales. So I'm thinking I'll just stick with that same theme, but create something that feels different from what's already up in my portfolio. 
Okay, so internal monologue continuing. Um, now that I've nailed down the motif, it's time to think about color. Um, with a lot of my work, I create multiple color palettes out of the exact same illustration. And I do this for a few different reasons. One, it's really simple and fast to do. Planning and illustrating my design takes about 95% of my time and effort. Recoloring takes about 5%. So it is a low commitment, high value. And two, after I've put in all of that hard work of creating a brand new design, I absolutely want to maximize its potential success and get the most bang for my buck. And the easiest way to do this is through adding more color options. So if someone likes my orange blooms, but that blush background isn't really working for them in their home, I also have several other background colors that they could choose from. So the blush might not work for them, but charcoal might just do the trick. So I earned a sale that I otherwise might have lost. Creating multiple color options is super simple, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that a bit later in this class. But for now, I want to determine the colors I use for my original drawing. So let's take another quick peek at anthropology for some inspiration here. It looks like traditional neutral palettes for animal print is their preference. Maybe paired with a jewel tone like emerald or teal. Good to know. Uh, let's take a peek at mod cloth. They have the same neutral traditional palette, but they also have a more modern approach with unexpected colors that you don't generally associate with leopard prints, like mint and light pink. And honestly, that modern approach feels more in line with my brand as well. I like using pops of bright color, especially if it's unexpected for that particular theme, like my pink crocodiles and these minty cheetahs I painted in the past. So I think I'm gonna go along that route. Unexpected, modern, bright pops of color. Teal and blush work really well together, and I use this color combo in a lot of my artwork. Plus, I see a lot of these colors repeated as I scroll through these websites, which means they're on trend and will probably get a better customer response. If I'm using a really bright palette, I like to pepper in a few neutral tones to make it feel more sophisticated. When you go with all rainbow colors, it can tend to look a little bit childish which is absolutely great if that's your audience, but I want to appeal to stylish women, so I'm keeping that in mind when I choose my color palette. If you enjoyed this thought process and internal monologue and strategy to learn more about what I look for when I track trends, check out my previous class, How to Discover Profitable Design Trends Before Anyone Else, and Create Artwork with Mass Appeal. That class has a ton of good nuggets, so you can learn how to identify trends and incorporate them into your artwork. And popular designs mean more success in licensing. Okay, so now that I've got that idea in my mind, both in terms of what I want to draw, jungle cats, and the colors I want to use, let's get our ideas out of our brains and sketched out on screen in Procreate.